Hi everyone, welcome back to the Decades of Action Challenge, my series on the last 50 years of action movies. In particular, the most important and influential action movie of each year, starting with 1968, as chosen by uh, Tom Brehan, who is writing uh, an essay series for avclub.com on this very subject. Um, we're on a 2008. His pick for this year is Taken, uh, which is a, a Luc Besson production directed by a guy named Pierre Morel, who did uh, District 13. I'm sorry, that's District B13, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, I wrote that down wrong. Film I haven't seen, but it has apparently lots of great stunt work in it. Um, he went on after this to do uh, From Paris with Love with John Travolta and The Gunman with um, Sean Penn. Um, but, of course, he's best well-known for this one. Uh, because um, Liam Neeson, of course, uh, got a whole action uh, hero career out of uh, out of this one movie. Did two more Taken films after that, and then he worked with another um, uh, uh, director who I believe is named uh, Wame Kalatsera. Uh, and he did um, several movies with him. Uh, he's got a new one called The Commuter coming out uh, early next year. Um, and, uh, yeah, this was uh, a big surprise hit. Um, it was all sort of um, marketed around uh, him doing, you know, lots of fighting with guys, but also the whole speech that he gives to the um, unknown assailant uh, who has kidnapped his daughter a a across the Atlantic Ocean uh, gives him his whole speech about his particular set of skills and says, if you let my daughter go now, I that'll be the end of it, but if you take her, I will find you and I'll kill you. <laughs> um, the trailer um, and, and a lot of the marketing revolved around that speech in much the same way that the uh, marketing for The Sixth Sense revolved around Haley Joel Osment's I See Dead People bit. Um, and it uh, seemed to really help, um, you know, people uh, get, a, get, get people excited about the film. Um, the film itself is okay, not great. Um, I don't um, really care for the way that uh, the action scenes are done. They're uh, shot very, very... Um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, erratically, and the cutting is super fast. There's a scene where he's driving really fast, and he's tracking basically a boat. He's driving alongside a river that a boat is going down. And the close-ups of him are so quick, they're almost subliminal. Boom! It's just over. You know, he's just like, kind of effective in maintaining this sort of desperate mood that he has, because every step of the way he's getting closer and closer to finding his daughter, who, by the way, is played by Maggie Grace, who's supposed to be 17, and she's not that young. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a funny thing about this character is, is that Maggie Grace, I, I, don't, I didn't look up how old she is, but she's probably in her mid to late 20s, um, which means she's about 10 years too old to play the character, but really more like 15 years old because although the character is 17, she acts more like she's 11 or 12 or, I mean, she's super young. She's all sort of wide-eyed. She's like, oh, daddy, I love you, and, and is just like super excited and giddy about all kinds of things and very, very naive and wide-eyed and um, uh, you know, uh, um, it's it's just you know, I, you know, lo you know, good for Maggie Grace for really, really committing to the part, even though you know she's, uh, uh, you know, it, it just doesn't, you know, it, it's 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 hard to sell a character like that, um, being so wide-eyed and innocent and everything like that. And the whole subtext of the movie is she gets well, well, the plot is she's on a trip to Paris uh, with her best friend. Um, as soon as they get there, they're, they're abducted, basically, by some Albanians that are going to sell them to sex traffickers. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and so, you know, Liam Neeson, you know, who's basically got some special forces experience and is very good with weapons and combat and everything like that and, and figuring out how to find people like her uh, who have been abducted. Uh, he, he, you know, flies over there and immediately, uh, you know, starts doing everything he can to track her down and cuts a swath through, you know, all the uh, criminal underworld of Paris. Um, uh, so that's the plot of the movie. The subtext really is an overprotective dad wanting to protect the innocence of his daughter, keep her daddy's little girl and, you know, innocent and sweet and not sexually experienced, really. I mean, that's not what the movie's about, but that's kind of what the subject is. That got that pretty loud and clear. Because, like I said, she, in the movie, they say she's 17, but she acts more like she's 13. She acts a lot younger uh, and a lot less... <laughs> um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, just, just worldly, less worldly. It's like, you know, 
she acts like she's never met a boy in her entire life and is giddy about absolutely everything. Um, whereas the typical 17-year-old, probably a little bit more jaded. Anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, who else is in this movie? Of course, we got Famke Janssen, who played Jean Grey in the X-Men movies as her mother. Um, she's divorced from Liam Neeson because he was away so long uh, and kind of an absent dad. She's married now to Xander Berkeley, who played uh, John Connor's uh, foster dad in Terminator 2. Um, and luckily, he's very wealthy and owned, has a partnership with an airline, so he's able to get a flight from Liam Neeson immediately to, to fly over to Paris real quick. Um, Leland Orser is in this movie. Leland Orser um, uh, was in you know a few movies in the 90s that I remember. Um, he was in Seven. Uh, he was in Alien Resurrection. He's been in a bunch of different things, and he was like an old buddy of his. He... Um, uh, helps Liam Neeson by tra uh, finding out some information about the guys that uh, took his daughter. Uh, so Liam Neeson has a place to go to when he actually gets there. You know, he has a place to start. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, uh, 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 Brehan was talking about how, you know, this started a trend of older actors like Sean Penn and uh, and and uh, and uh, and uh, and Liam Neeson and other guys um, in that sort of age range uh, doing uh, uh, you know taking on an action movie in their later years. Kevin Costner he, he mentions a few of them basically. Um, but he's also talking about um, just uh, just how it was that Liam Neeson you know was very effective in selling basically the whole concept of the movie because he has the gravitas to really sort of sell the character and. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I agree with that. He's, he's you know, good in the part. Uh, the movie itself is just kind of okay and not really something that I've been particularly fond of. It was one of those that I knew I'd be rewatching for the series, but I wasn't um, really looking forward to all that much. Um, there's a couple good uh, fights in there, but they're so quickly cut, you know, so erratic uh, that it's really hard to keep track of what's happening there. And, um, and I think, and Brehan theorizes this because Liam Neeson, although he probably went through a lot of fight training, didn't get that good at it, so they really heavily edited the movie a lot to uh, make him look better. And also, of course, to cut out the nastiest bits of violence because they wanted a PG-13 rating, and you can't have lots of, you know, bloody wounds in a PG-13 movie. Um, kind of uh, questionable as far as, like, the, um, the themes of this movie and the story content, aside from just, like, there being violence. Uh, this movie is about sex traffickers, it's about women. Women, um, young women uh, getting kidnapped and addicted to drugs so they can become prostitutes working for these uh, scummy characters, you know. Um, there's a scene where Liam Neeson uh, finds out there's a construction site where some of these guys work out of. And he finds there's a whole line of men, a whole line of customers who are willing to just uh, plunk down their money and go into one of these curtain booths where there's a girl there who's clearly out of her head uh, so they can have sex with her, you know, and that's, that's, that's the whole thing. I'm like, this is a PG-13 movie. This is, this is uh, kind of dark stuff for uh, PG-13, but then PG-13 covers a lot these days. Um, you know, a lot of violent, a lot of sort of questionable content. Uh, it, it takes an extra special effort to get an R rating, I guess. <clears throat> um, yeah, so, uh, so a lot of the fight scenes, you know, although they're quick and they're fast and they can be brutal, um, there's hardly any blood in them, so that's sort of, uh, you know, a little uh, something questionable about that. Taken 3 is even worse because they've got guys, you know, uh, who, who wearing no clothes at all, uh, no, no, no shirt, getting shot in the chest, and there's no bloody wounds at all. It's just like a little, neat little hole. It's just like ridiculous. Um, I saw Taken 3 a couple years ago um, for uh, a collab channel video, and man, that movie's terrible. The editing is even worse. The, um, the uh, 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 sequels were done by Oliver Megaton. Uh, rather than Pierre Morel. Pierre Morel, I guess, had better things to do. Um, but uh, the movies that Liam Neeson has made with uh, Call It Sarah, uh, he's made Unknown, Nonstop, um, Run All Night, and now The Commuter, um, those have been actually a lot more entertaining uh, and fun, and so I would definitely recommend those over Overtaken. Um, anyone else I wanted to... Oh, yeah, um, Kate Cassidy, who plays Black Canary on the CW DC shows. She plays um, um, Kim... Kim's best friend, who goes over to Paris with her, and basically they get rid of her right away, because when Liam Neeson finds her, she's already dead. So he's like, well, good, at least I don't have to worry about getting her back to the States as well. And the funny thing is, I can't remember what movie it was, but there was something very, very similar that happened in a different movie, where this man is looking for a young girl and her friend... Um, but it's, you know, he cares a lot more about one than the other, as Liam Neeson when he cares more about his daughter than her friend. And the exact same thing happens. He comes across the friend first, 
and she's already done for, she's already dead, whatever. So it's like, oh great, I don't have to, and, and so the whole thing is, you know, luckily he, he can spend, uh, devote the rest of his time just finding his daughter or whoever, uh, rather than um, the, uh, the friend as well, without her sort of weighing her down. Um, uh, I guess you could say it's not a it's kind of a cynical way of looking at it but it's just narratively convenient for the best friend to already be dead by the time he gets here so you know there's nothing he can do for her so he just you know he just leaves her he just leaves the body doesn't even you know think uh, 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 twice about it at least not appear to and he just goes on looking for his daughter and brings her back and the do and the best friend is never mentioned again um, <laughs> after that which is uh, a little a uh, little cold um, Holly Valance. Holly Valance is in this movie. Holly Valance uh, is a uh, English actress. Um, uh, she was in uh, DOA, Dead or Alive. There was a movie adaptation of the game Dead or Alive uh, with the um, you know uh, women doing martial arts competitions and then having bikini volleyball uh, tournaments and stuff. <laughs> um, Holly Valance was in that movie, um, and uh, she plays a pop star in this movie uh, who uh, 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 Liam Neeson uh, uh, works for for like... <clears throat> Uh, the first part of the movie um, fends off a uh, knife-wielding attacker. I just thought it was kind of interesting that she was in this. Because uh, this is mostly a European production. I'm not sure how much of it was actually shot in the States. Maybe just the first part. Um, but she's playing an American pop star, and she's actually English. I, I just find that kind of interesting. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's um, pretty much all there is to say about this movie. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not crazy about it. You know, it's a time waster, really. Um, and um, and uh, unfortunately, gives us two sequels. I had never saw Taken Two. I've seen bits of it on TV. Never really saw the whole thing. Don't really want to. And Taken Three is is garbage. So don't even bother with that one. Um, so yeah, not really a recommendation for me this time. Um, Brehan, um, of course, is continuing to publish um, the uh, continuing to post the articles in his series on AVClub.com. Uh, there is the one that just came out today, which is on the Raid Redemption. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And he also mentioned his uh, pick for uh, the next one he's doing on the 2013 choice. Um, I thought it would be Gravity. Turns out it's actually Snowpiercer, which is great because I've only seen that movie one time. I'll get to rewatch Snowpiercer for this series. I guess wrong, but it's okay because it's not like I need to see Gravity again. I've seen it a bunch of times. Uh, so Snowpiercer. Um, so uh, that's it for now. Um, uh, I've got, uh, of course, another video next week. It will be on uh, Brehan's choice for uh, 2009. That is a direct-to-video movie called Universal Soldier Regeneration. And since it's been forever since I've seen the first Universal Soldier uh, in 1992, I'm going to actually rewatch that one and then watch Regeneration because both Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren came back uh, for Regeneration. So we'll see how that goes. Never, didn't even know existed, really. I mean, it's not like I'm overly concerned with Universal Soldier sequels, but I am going to watch it for the series. Um, so that'll be next week. Uh, that'll be on Friday. Um, thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to see other videos in my series, the link to the playlist, of course, is below as usual, as is my Facebook page. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again real soon. Later.